Boketov, Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. A lot of uh, very serious situations that are going on in and around the world. It is very obvious uh, from what we can see right now that the United States is definitely working in behind the scenes to push Russia into a confrontation. Now, whether or not it's over to gain control of the oil-rich regions there of Syria, uh, the, the Mediterranean Sea, the oil-rich areas and ga natural gas areas buried there under the sea off of Israel, Egypt, etc. Not quite sure what <clears throat> the ultimate plan is, uh, but let me bring you up to date some of the inter interesting information that we have been able to pull together from this thus far. Uh, on TASS Russian News, it is reporting that Don the Donsk region, the outskirts of the Donsk region, uh, was being shelled this morning. Uh, now, for those of you in America, I believe it's probably about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, your time there. It's already a little bit after noontime here, uh, over here for us. Uh, but in the... Donsk region, which is in uh, Ukraine, uh, the country of Ukraine there, uh, the battle suddenly has heated up. There has been uh, 277 tanks by the Ukrainian government uh, taken to the uh, edge of Donsk, uh, the Donsk uh, region, which is a self-proclaimed uh, republic there that has declared, declared their independence. Uh, at one point, NATO had worked out a solution there with Russia. They were seeming to be pushing towards a self-autonomy uh, um, self, uh, type of region there. And now suddenly a huge amount of tanks and everything has come on the border there. They started shelling. You can see here in the streets here, the cars are, are jam-packed here. Uh, people getting out and walking with their bags. These are mothers and children. Uh, trying to escape this war-torn region there uh, and something that apparently was beginning to go back to normal again. But what is really going on? Let me give you a little bit of the headlights of the article right here so you can get a feel for that. You can see here in your screen there the tanks that are rolling in. Uh, these are Ukrainian tanks there. As I said, 277 tanks uh, that have lined the outskirts of the Donsk region there. Uh, at, at around 9 a.m. this morning, local time for them. The ministry uh, noted that the fire emanated from the Ukrainian armed forces position in the village of Pesky with the Ukraine armed units using 82 millimeter mortars, according to the agreement reached during the talks uh, uh, of the contact group in Minsk of Belarus. The full ceasefire on the line contact of Donbass uh, region came into effect on September 1st. However, the DPR Defense Ministry earlier said that the situation in the region had deteriorated and that has been a substantial increase in the number of artillery bombardments on the northern and western outskirts of Donsk and its suburbs. Um, this is very clear in my uh, estimation, what I can see myself, that that the U.S. is pushing again Ukraine to start an all-out offensive on the Donsk and, and no doubt later will be Luhansk as well region there. And the purpose for this is to get Russia caught up in another quagmire in Ukraine. The United States would like to divert Russia's attention from the Middle East. And, and perhaps this is the whole reason why we saw the civil unrest in Ukraine to begin with. This may have been why the United States uh, came in and toppled the, the government in Ukraine. Uh, there has been clear evidence to see CIA's involvement in toppling the, the Ukrainian government um, and causing a coup, causing a civil war in the nation there um, and, and putting in Poroshenko uh, and, and his band of thugs there. Uh, it, it, from what I can tell now, as we really begin to, to examine this, the U.S. wanted to deter uh, Russia from having anything to do with the Middle East. Although Russia was arming uh, Basra al-Assad while he was fighting all the different groups around him, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, uh, and both of these organizations clearly uh, have been built by the United States uh, to, 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 to try to, to kill as many Muslims as they can in that region as part of their own war against uh, the, the Syrian state to topple Basra al-Assad uh, to gain control of this region here. And although I'm not for communism and I'm not for, 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 for the sh sh uh, Sharia law either by no means, 
Um, you know, this has been the U.S.'s idea of being able to, to, to slow the Islamic growth down. Uh, in fact, in another article that came out this morning, I was watching uh, an Egyptian uh, cleric who was speaking about uh, the Paris bombings, and he actually states in there that it was done by the French government itself to justify, again, more attacks on the Islamic people. Uh, Clearly, like I said, when it comes to Islam, I do not agree with the religion. I do not agree with the fundamentalities of, of what they believe or anything of this nature here. But uh, I can certainly see that there is definitely very strange suspicions about how the attack occurred in Paris. Uh, at this point here, though, going back to looking here at what's happening in Donsk and um, uh, eastern Ukraine, it, it is quite evident that the United States wants to divert attention from Russia in their battle there in Syria to help uh, Basar al-Assad, and they're trying to get Russia caught up with another front. They figure Russia cannot handle more than one front at a time, and right now Russia is doing a very uh, powerful campaign against ISIS there in, uh, in the Middle East there. Some, of course, some believe that they're not fighting ISIS either. Uh, I do believe that it's quite clear that Russia is, has been bombing the Turkish-backed um, fighters there in the region, as well as the U.S.-backed fighters, which are Turkish as well, um, which is causing a lot of problems for the United States. So I can see why the U.S. is wanting to draw Russia into a battle in uh, the Ukraine, hoping to weaken its forces and to draw Russian forces away from the Syrian conflict uh, so that they will be forced to deal with another front altogether. Now, uh, we got that right there. Let me take you to another uh, point here just to show you what's going on. The Pentagon, according to TASS Russian News here, um, the Pentagon warns Russia against arming its warplanes in Syria with air-to-air -air missiles. After Turkish planes fire and bomb and knock down a Russian Su-24 out of the air, uh, now the U.S. has the audacity to tell Russia, warn Russia, not to arm its own planes with the air, de uh, air defense missiles. Uh, that's just kind of absurd, I would have to say. And even the United States, I know that uh, RT News was questioning there. They were in the, uh, the briefing room in the United States and the official uh, refused to acknowledge that the Russian Su-24 was shot down over Syria. Uh, although there have been some U.S. officials that have agreed that, yes, it was shot down over Syria. Uh, the, the, the U.S. Uh, sp spokesman did say that the Russian plane ventured a little bit into the Turkish airspace and would, had gone back into Syria already once it had been struck. Uh, but when RT's uh, news anchor actually questioned them directly, they refused to comment that the plane was actually shot down over Syria. Uh, it's only escalating the tensions there. Uh, according to the Pentagon spokesman, uh, Michelle Bandalza told TASS on Monday that Russia's arming its Su-34 warplanes in Syria with air-to-air uh, air missiles can only complicate the this, this situation. Um, and as you can see here in the photos here on your screen here, uh, that now they loading with bombs, but they are putting on the air air to air defenses there. Uh, Russia no doubt needs that, especially in light has not only has Turkey shot down one of their bombers, but Turkey also did one of its largest um, fighter jet uh, patrols in its history uh, this month already as well, putting 18 F-16s in the air along the Syrian-Turkish border there. Uh, so it, it's definitely as provocative on, uh, on both sides. Russia went in and bombed as many places as they possibly could after their pilot was killed there. Um, but anyway, they say here that Russia's uh, arming the Su-34 warplanes in Syria with an air-to-air -air missiles can only complicate an already difficult situation in Syria in the airspace. Pentagon spokesman Michelle uh, Baldanza told TASS on Monday, such systems will further complicate an already difficult situation over the skies of Syria and do, not, and do nothing to further the fight against ISIL, the former name of the terrorist group Islamic State, which outlawed in Russia. As they have no air force, she said, we expect that if Russia follows through, they will abide by our memorandum on, uh, of understanding regarding the fight safety and, and, and not direct this system against the coalition aircraft. 
that's pretty provocative on the United States' part, if you ask me, because uh, it was the coalition that shot down Russia to begin with, intentionally, uh, I might add. Now, we might wonder then, why did, why did the U.S., or why did uh, Turkey down this plane? Well, there's a big reason behind it. And this man right here, he is a Syrian Turkman. He's actually a Turkish citizen who killed the Russian pilot. Uh, they say that he's an ultranationalist, but he is a Turkish citizen. Uh, he is part of the Grey Wolves uh, group. Those that may not know who the Grey Wolves are, it is a CIA-backed operative group that has been, uh, been working now for oh gosh, nearly two decades, uh, especially here in this last uh, uh, few years here, fighting the Kurds as well as the Syrian uh, army there. They are backed by the Turks, by the CIA, by the, uh, the NATO alliance there. They do all types of operations, including uh, tried to assassinate John Paul II. Um, very interesting man right here. And uh, he actually uh, claims to have, uh, to have killed the pilot when he was parachuting down. He's a Syrian rebel commander who boasted of killing the Russian pilot after Turkey downed Russian jet on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday appeared to be a Turkish ultranationalist, a son of a former mayor in one of the Turkish provinces. Uh, Olparsan Selik, deputy commander of the Syrian Turkmen Brigade, turned out to be the son of mayor of Kiban municipality in Turkey, uh, uh, Elazig province. He also turned out to be the member of the Grey Wolves Ultranational Group, members of which he have carried out scores of political murders since the 1970s. Uh, the the, um, uh, the Selek came under a spotlight after he announced that he, as the two Russian pilots descended by parachute after the Su-24 was downed uh, by Turkish military, both were shot dead by the Turkmen forces on Tuesday. Now, when he said both were shot dead, you got to keep in mind he is assuming that they had killed the, the second pilot, uh, which did not turn out to be the case. Uh, but it's very interesting, to say the least, in what we see going on here uh, in this region of the world. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and in light of the fact that uh, the, the, the gray wolves are behind this in the first place, that's a very serious accusation because they are backed by the CIA <clears throat> and doing many multiple operatives there. Uh, like I said, they were also involved in the assassination attempt of John Paul uh, the second, and, and, and it only makes me wonder what reason that was for. I've not been able to, to fully uncover what that plot is there. Um, but, um, but needless to say, very serious situation there. Uh, <clears throat> to give you a little bit of information, the ultranational gray wolves are part of uh, the anti-communist Cold War strategy. Now, just so you know why they are an enemy of Russia as well. The Kurdish uh, PKK is Marxist communist and they are supported by the Turkish leftists like the Marxist Leninist Communist Party of Turkey. The American CIA supported the Grey Wolves and Turkish government in the assassina assassination and killing of the Kurds and the Turkish leftists. The Grey Wolves burned an entire building full of leftist uh, Aleve Turks and they were roasted to death. The CIA incumbent, the Grey Wolves, and Muslim Brotherhood and Islamists like uh, uh, <coughs> Ahmad uh, Kamal in Germany to use against leftists in the Middle East. The people of, uh, of Judah, Iscariot, also supported the Turks, sold them weapons to use against the Kurds and helped with the denial of, their, uh, of the Armenian Genocide. Uh, many more things could be said about them. Arafat and the PLO supported and trained Armenian Asala and Kurdish PKK to fight against the Turkey while the PLO was in Lebanon, the people of Judas like Shimon, Perez, uh, Evigdor, etc. Anyway, it is a very, <clears throat> very serious situation that we have going on in the Middle East there. It, it is obvious from what I can tell with the, with the escalation of tensions between Turkey and Russia, that there is definitely going to become a full blown out conflict between Turkey and Russia. If this does incur, that this is also going to draw the United States into battle with Russia as well because they will have to defend Turkey. We know back in 2002, I believe it was, uh, the United, or 2012, I think it was actually, I apologize, uh, is when the United States actually sent the Iron Dome into Turkey to defend Turkey from uh, the Syrian state. <clears throat> 
Now Russia is faced with dealing with the Turks who have the Iron Dome as well, uh, unless, of course, the U.S. took it out of there. I'm not sure if they did or did not, but uh, at that point there, now Russia has the S-400 missile system in there, which the Iron Dome cannot stop. Uh, so it is a major issue for the United States, and I believe this is why we see the, the rising tensions there in Ukraine, uh, because the U.S. needs to divert Russia's attention from being fully involved in Syria with no other problems, but to create another problem on its own border near, uh, near the, uh, the, the Ukrainian border there with the Donsk and Luhansk regions there. It's going to be some very interesting developments, and I do believe that you're going to see an all-out war again break out in Ukraine, and many more people will die at the hands of just the United States wanting to divert attention. Very sad indeed. Uh, pray for Israel. Pray for people all over the world. Pray for those true believers of Yeshua that are in any of these regions, whether they be in Turkey, the Middle East, whether they be in Europe, Russia, whatever the case may be, these are the people that suffer. And, and that's what's sad. Many people, as we saw in the photograph here at the top of your screen now there, um, these families here, mothers and children, having to flee war-torn areas just because the U.S. wants to divert Russia's attention. So they go and attack a bunch of innocent civilians there to draw Russia in another direction. Very sad indeed. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Very sorry to have to bring you this type of news that is going on uh, indeed. You would be, be, be so glad when the millennial reign comes and Yeshua rules and there will be peace and no more weapons of war. Shalom and good evening.